There we go. All right. <laughs> oh, look, I have a full view of you now. I can see you. <laughs> and goofy. And goofy. Yeah, I don't have just a little tiny picture like last week. All right. <laughs> I'm going to back out of the picture some more here. I keep getting away. There we go. I'm out of the picture. Okay. And I, I talked to him at uh, UPS. So. So if you're just joining us, I'm off to the side. Hold. <laughs> I'm drinking my coffee. <laughs> Don't bother me. <laughs> oh, I know. I'll show. I'm going to set you down here. There we go. All right. Don't pay any attention to that guy walking by. So those of you who are joining, that's actually what I'm working on. You feel like you're in the stretch room? <laughs> I'll, I'll let you tell me when it's three. Is it time? <laughs> Yes, no. Can you hear me, Romina? I think I lost her. Oh, no. Let me move the painting. Okay. Oh, there you are. Can you hear me, Romina? Okay, hold on a second. Oh, okay. We're, we're here, people. No, I think it won't rotate. Oh, okay. okay. So your, you said your camera is off now. We always have something going on, don't we? Hold on a second. <laughs> okay, are you there? Yes. Hi, everybody. Okay. It's 3 o'clock. <laughs> we... We really thought we were ready, but we are. We are, yes. Romina <laughs> is here with me. And I actually have, look, there oh, she there is. You and you get to see Romina. So <laughs> everybody wave at Romina, yes. So, so now you got, the, you got a face with the voice. And uh, so, yay, that worked well. And we have the- um, At least there's no delay. And there's no delay. We were doing a- uh, a test video uh, Romina and I that only she and I could see to make sure you could see the lines when I was laying this out and um, <laughs> except I had a five second delay on it <laughs> so, that was weird <clears throat> hi we're back we're here um, and uh, just uh, real quick I want to say hi <laughs> to Linda and Emily at the UPS My store your camera's off? Uh, you're, well, you're having, uh, Romina's having problems. <laughs> uh, I can't see you. Oh, well, well, you can see me on the on the Facebook, right? Yeah. You just I can't can see, see me on the Facebook. phone. Weird. So we're good. Okay. Um, yeah, I want to uh, just shout out to uh, the UPS store that I, I go to and Linda and Emily, thank you so much because you guys send all the paintings out that I do. And, uh, <laughs> and of course, you saw the picture last week uh, that I took of, uh, of of Linda and I with the mug she had bought of me. So, <laughs> yay! Hi. Um, okay, uh, some quick updates, and I'm going to start drawing um, the mural uh, for City of Aurora. I have no update on that yet. That's going to the the process of being fully uh, approved. 
and uh, that probably will take a couple more weeks. And uh, so that's where that is. Uh, Suzanne and I are still writing on the book because we have to have it to the publisher here in about uh, four or five more weeks now. And uh, I'm currently writing a chapter right now about Mark Davis and a uh, uh, discussion he and I had about the uh, temple that he designed in the Jungle Cruise. So that's kind of neat, uh, among other things that were going on. I actually go into the temple to work on the tiger and the monkeys and replace a missing monkey's tail. So it's tail of a tail. Um, and I got, I got to tell you this. Last week after I, um, let's see, what was earlier in the week? Well, anyway, I it was, yeah, last Friday. I had to get, I went to the VA for my six-month checkup. I'm, and I'm, I'm in great shape. Yay. Um, but they informed me that uh, they have a new shingle shot. Shingles, yes. Say that fast three times. Um, I got one five years ago, something like that, at the Veterans Administration. And, uh, but they said this is a newer one and it works even better. And since I'm older, you know, I'm past the age of 23, I'm 24 now. Um, and I don't want to, don't want to get shingles. Um, but anyway, because it's very painful. Well, so is the damn shot. <laughs> God, the guy says, are you right-handed or left-handed? I says, well, I'm by, you know, I can pay with, draw with both hands, <laughs> but I'm mostly right-handed. He says, okay, give it to you in the left arm. I went, this doesn't sound good. He says, you're going to hate me tomorrow. I hated him within a couple hours because <laughs> it was like getting hit by a crowbar in the shoulder, and it was so sore by, by evening. I, I'm going like, I can't raise my arm. <laughs> And it's still, I can press on it, and it's still a little sore. The bad thing is that in six months, I have to go back for the second part of the shot. So I have to do it again. Oh, what fun. And Ryan Lyman, you had a thing out this past week about things in the ocean that can get you. And I said on their hands, I says, you have to watch out for the bitey thingy things, the bitey thingies. That's why I don't go in the ocean. I used to surf. I used to scuba dive in the ocean. But then after I got on a Disney and was scuba diving in 20,000 lakes, much safer. I just had to watch out for the other three artists who kept turning my ear off and pulling my mask off. But at least they weren't biting me. Okay. And one last quick thing. I want to, uh, this is for the Disney groups that, allow me to post these videos uh, after we go off live and uh, and post other things that I'm doing and they've been great. Uh, so I want to mention all of them. These are great groups. Disney Parks people, of course that's Ryan and Stacey Lehman, and this, uh, the Secret Disney group, uh, Crazy for Disney, that's Rudy Clark, Claire, I said it wrong, sorry. Uh, Disney Fun and Games, uh, the, the Pietro, Pietro. Now I'm going to say everybody's name wrong. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I should have written your names on here so I'd have it right. I'm So Disney, Lost in Disney Magic, which is in England. Uh, now that's Disney and Disney World Savages. Thanks to all of you for allowing me to post these videos. So if you want to join some other groups, join those groups. Join this group too. First, no, you can join. I don't care. And get your mug, so you and, can have oh, your mug. Yes, and uh, I put on here about the our books that are on Amazon. You can go to the Amazon and just put in R.J. Ogren or Suzanne Ogren. All of our books come up, including her her wonderful novel of ribbons. And. Uh, Hopefully, before the year is out, if everything goes right with the publishers uh, and everything gets printed on time, our uh, third Disney book will be on Amazon also. And if you want to buy the mug with a picture of me on it, uh, that is on Zazzle, and I put that on here with the uh, connection. And actually, uh, before the weekend's out, there will be a shirt 
of with that image on it. Um, and the saying, which is actually uh, our title of our third book, Imagination and Dreams Are Forever. So that's kind of cool. I've already designed it on Zazzle. I just haven't posted it yet. All right, Romina, anything you, uh, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to start on this and then Romina will, uh, of course, is wonderful. She's the producer of the show and she's the monitor here. So when you ask questions or anything, so I don't have to keep looking down and seeing what you're asking or saying, uh, she lets me know and then I can make comments on it. Yes, I have, well, we have here that Jennifer is online. Hi, Judy Jennifer. says, thanks for sharing your talent with us. Oh, and also you. Tina says, hi, RJ. So hi, welcome, Tina. everybody. Hi, hi everybody. <laughs> thank yes. you. <laughs> <No>. So. <clears throat> I'm sorry. You, well, you are um, um, painting on a bigger scale the sketch the smaller sketch version that you have on the bottom of the painting yes so let me tell you I, if you did not see the show last week and the great thing is i i save these shows and actually uh, i'm putting all of these on youtube i was putting them on youtube a lot and then i kind of got away from that and i put last week's show on youtube but they're on facebook for you to watch if you haven't seen them and uh Last week, I showed the sketch. This this is a painting, 30 by 40 inches. You're only, that is where my finger is there. There's another foot of painting going over. So as I sketch across here, I'll slide this across. Um, but the I'm gonna show you the, the sketches we did to start with. So it was a couple of weeks ago, Romina, um, I actually sketched this um, on the, um, well, we were doing a video chat so I could get the layout. And this is in the library of the Haunted Mansion. And it's a combination of the library and the music room with the piano. And the it's just it's a combination of everything. <laughs> so yeah. let's play more. So from this sketch, then last week, I actually laid out uh, on the last week's video this sketch. And this is quite close to scale of this big 30 by 40 canvas. Uh, so now I'm gonna show you how I lay out the background, the, the bookcases uh, and the alcoves where the, the busts are that rotate. And just so you know, when I paint this, which I'll start on next week, um, we're gonna do each part of this painting uh, each week on the show. So next week I actually be blocking in colors. But anyway, this uh, is also going to be painted in regular light with acrylic, tube acrylic paints that I get from Blick, which are very good. And, um, but then in black light, which I also get from Blick, which are high powered UV light paint, uh, black light paint, it's ultraviolet. And I mix these together with the tube acrylics and uh, to create these paintings that in regular light looks like a normal painting. You turn out the lights, turn the black lights on, and it glows in the black light. And it's also going to be in 3D, where you put on special digital, clear digital glasses. And when you, and things will come off of the painting, other things will sink into it. And when you move around the room, things will rotate and shift. It's a really wild process. And something I did a lot of in haunted houses. Uh, that I've designed over the years, which are in the third book that uh, that I wrote uh, called The Design of Fear. And I talk about the haunted mansion and all the haunted houses. Funny stories. Anyway. Yeah, so it so, was an easy process to yeah. like sit down with you because I had an idea in my head, but you were able to lay it out on paper and that was really good to do it uh, uh, through FaceTime. So you can see what I wanted, and then you would design it and then show me. And that's exactly. how the painting actually came to life. So even though I'm doing, in fact, I'm doing uh, two stretch room paintings right now um, for somebody else. But we thought it would be great with this process, yeah. even though your painting, this painting I'm doing here, doesn't come up in, the, in my painting queue until about 
let's see, April, May, somewhere in June, sort of, <laughs> if I ever in June, yeah, late, yeah. mid June, whatever. <laughs> yeah. So uh, when we get to that point, uh, then the process will start videoing it and doing it different. But you're going to see the whole process on this, which will be fun because uh, people have asked to see something like this, and now you're going to see it. So, so actually and romina didn't got, get to see this sketch until i actually did it live last week um so there's madame leota here there's the casket with the guy trying to get out of it there's the hitchhiking ghost here uh there's two there's one there there's another one over here and of course the bookcase is behind them the, we have the suit of armor in here i've got the uh, opera singer she's right there behind the piano and outside the window, I've got the caretaker and the dog. And gosh, what else in here? Oh, That's, the singing bus. Oh, and the singing the, the singing bus are out in the cemetery outside. And oh, and yes. up here is the chandelier with the two ghosts on it that are yeah. toasting and swinging back and forth. So, um, <laughs> what I'm going to do is tape this down right below here, where I can see it. It's not in your way. And, um, of course, what I have done is with pictures I've taken and photos that I have uh, found from other things for details, I have all kinds of pictures of, of uh, inside the Haunted Mansion. Um, there's the caretaker and the dog. And actually, he's going to be turned the other way, so I'm reversing his image on here as he looks in the window. So what I'm going to do first is show you how I lay out the bookcase and the, uh, and the wall here, because this bookcase goes across and it angles out a little bit going up to the right. And then over here is another angled wall. And this is where the window is, where the piano is. So you then have an architectural background. You're able yes. to uh, bring it up to scale a little bit better. Yes, I have um, been painting and drawing my whole life, but I was very fascinated with architecture until I hit calculus. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I worked for architects all the way through college, and uh, and for a few months after I graduated from University of Miami in '72, um, and learned drafting. And but then I actually became uh, a designer, architectural designer, designing um, high rises, designing homes and offices, but I did renderings of these. So I had to know perspective quite well. And I did that after I left Disney, actually. I did it for another 15 years after I did left Disney while I was doing murals and while I was doing paintings. Um, so you can see this. <laughs> I use this when I'm painting too. I'll tell you why, because what we tend to do, and I'll tell you a little trick too. Uh, if you've never, you are people that have done done art that are watching know this. Uh, but what you do is when you go to draw something, um, like this quick sketch here I did. Uh, when you are drawing, it will either lean left or right, and you're used to seeing it, and you're laying it out. If you then take it into the into the bedroom or bathroom where there's a mirror, and you hold it up and toward the mirror and look into the mirror at your drawing, you'll see immediately how it's angled one direction or the other. It's a natural tendency for us to do that. So when I'm laying out something, especially like this, or with buildings in it, I I will check to make sure that my vertical lines and my horizontal lines are correct. Um, that they actually are vertical and <laughs> tipped over. <laughs> um, but I use references like the edge of the painting when I'm painting too to look to see where I am. So, and what you're seeing line wise on here right now are some test lines I was doing. But this line, what I did is I laid this on the bottom, off the cross piece of the easel right here, and was laying this line. And this is the corner of the bookcase it goes all the way up there and then I'm going to darken this now normally I don't have to do this but for you to see it I figured out light wise that I had to do that 
and it sounds like I'm ripping the canvas, but I'm not. Uh, and I'm using a number two pencil. Uh, other people like to use charcoal, whatever. I like to use the number two pencil because it's easier. It's a smaller point, but also it's it's easy to cover. When I block in the colors, I will go over these lines, and then when I do the final painting over uh, the block colors, that just they're just they disappear. They're gone. Now, uh, what I have, this is an angle of the of the at the floor okay this is my floor line back here this is the main floor this is the back wall that's an angled wall the bookcase over there which you'll see there and here again the window so um down here and i'm going to put another one there because it's actually a little bit of a ledge at the bottom of the windows. Um, right here is the uh, piano, which I'll lay out here eventually. But also right here are the, there's curtains going up. So I'm gonna start that. So I got part of a straight line and there. So that's curtains. You don't need to put a lot of lines in that. I've got a bunch of pencils sharpened. Now, um, something, and I, I was, Romina and I were talking about this before we went on the air, that is uh, sadly lacking in a lot of uh, art classes, uh, especially in um, middle school and high school, and sometimes in college, is they don't teach perspective. And yeah, it can seem boring or whatever. And a lot of times you get into it and you well, draw this road going away and then the telephone poles going off in the distance and then some buildings. But once you get the grasp of it and how just to draw a box, a three dimension, even as simple as that, it makes it much easier to do, to do perspective drawings. And I'm doing an interior perspective here. So this line here goes way off to an imaginary uh, vanishing point way over that way. And up here at the top, I've got this angle going off. And this is the top of the window. So that's going that way. And there'll be some details up there I'll do when I paint. Um, but I've got one, two, yeah, I've got two cross pieces going across here, and I want to make sure they're equal. And there's a trick that I learned in renderings and architecture. Is I, my, my old ruler here, it's an 18 inch ruler. Um, this is 18 inches, so it's three sixes or 18. I know I'm trying not to confuse you, but if I put one point here, and another point down here on the bottom line, and then I mark it six inches and 12 inches. Um, that actually is equal spacing right there. And I'm going to do that again on the bookcase because that's a little bit different. And I've been drawing so long, I don't have to go off to the vanishing point. I can pretty much do it so that. And I'll visually correct that. So there's your cross pieces going this way. All right. And <laughs> what? <laughs> now, I also have uh, the vertical uh, parts of the windows, and I have one here. So I'm going to do the first one. And I got that off a little because that is that. Ah, that's off. RJ screwed up. <laughs> oh, no. I'm going to bring this up just a little bit. That's going to come up a little bit. Just ignore that. 
Okay. Anyway. <laughs> five, five, and five. That's better. So there's my line. I've corrected it. Um, okay. Now, um, I want to, as this is, as these windows are coming off at an angle, but getting closer to the to the foreground here, each of these has to be appropriately the right width. And to do that, I can go from corner to corner like this. And if I keep this in the same position and come across, I know. You don't know what I'm doing, but I'm going to draw another vertical right here. Then I'm going to do that again. I'm just going to keep this sliding across here. Okay. And then another one. I just want you to know I never make mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great thing. Well, we about. like it when you don't make mistakes. That's right. So, and then one last one right here. I'm doing this very quickly. And that is close. Okay. So, these get subtly larger. There it's like two inches there. This one's just over two inches. This one's two and three eighths. This one's two and five sixteenths. So each of these gets a little bit wider as it comes forward and makes it correct. And outside this window, I'm just gonna put them in real quick. I've got the caretaker. And I'm drawing him opposite of what he is there in this picture. And he has the shovel there. Arm. He's got this arm up. So he'll be holding the lantern up trying to look in the window. There's the lantern. He's got a three-quarter coat on, scarf. Hope all of you aren't being bothered too much by all the uh, pollen. Uh, Suzanne, <laughs> Suzanne has been sick for a week because of the allergies, but she's finally getting better. Okay, oh, that's good enough for right now. And then I've got the dog is gonna be down here looking in the window. You ever wonder why the dog is so underfed? This caretaker is not a very <laughs> yeah. nice guy. I mean, this poor dog is emaciated. And terrified. Yes, and terrified. Okay, so those are right there. That pencil is gone. Um, then uh, we have the piano. Get that out of the way. Get that out of the way. And I'll sketch in the piano real quick here. Yeah, this is a piano that you can only see the uh, shadow of the ghost playing when you go on the ride. So this one is not normally painted on any painter that I see. Uh, no. And um, so the piano is. A this is where you realize, or you know, I've been doing this so long. There's your, and that's real light, I don't know if you can see it. There's your, your box shape of the piano, and it's got some uh, curved legs, which are really nice. And just 
roughing these in because I'll do a lot of detail when I start to paint. There's your another leg here. I guess I should. Can you see that night watchman, that caretaker? Yes, we can see it. It's pretty oh, okay. clear, and the dog. So it's okay. coming up pretty clear. Okay. I don't. I don't know if everybody else can see it. Um, we also have Jeff there that says hello. He said it's been a while, and oh, hi, he Jeff. said he. I had more time on Fridays, and then Eddie is also online. He says I'm here, Randy. So okay. welcome. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hello. Now there's the keyboard right there. And there is, let's see, that comes there, goes in. And there is a piece here to hold the sheet music, which is right there. Yes. Okay. I might, yeah, I think I'm going to correct this some because of where the watchman is. I'm going to make this piano come down a little further. And further to the right? Further to the, or, this way. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I got you. Yeah. There we go. There's my keyboard right there. Um, that's going to look a little messy to you, but there's the other leg. I've just stretch that piano a little bit yeah and the opera singer i put her in and then i'm going to slide this um canvas the yeah, opera singer uh, i worked on these i worked on every single figure at some point in the haunted mansion uh whether it was putting skins on them or touching them up or redoing them loved working in there Not going to get into a lot of. There's her wings on her, on her helmet. It's yeah. really fascinating the the work that you and the detail eye that you have because when we were coming up with the idea for this painting and I was throwing up ideas and then you said, but there's a rug underneath and I. You know, as an ex-cast member and as a person that went there a lot, that was one of the details that I had completely forgotten. But you remember, so it is will and will be in the painting. Yeah. Well, it was fun because you know I I loved it. The the, the first day that I was an artist and and um, went into. Um, the Mickey Mouse review went into Pirates of the Caribbean. I wanted to walk and touch. I wanted to go everywhere. I wanted to go everywhere up above in the catwalks. I wanted to go on each set and look at stuff. And I did. I was constantly doing that. I just really enjoyed the heck out of it. Because I knew it was something that the general public didn't get to see, as opposed to now, which everybody gets to go. <laughs> Um, yeah, no. I, yeah, I, I, I know it's fascinating for all of you to see, but uh, I am still of the old school. I like the the magic of of you not being able to see backstage or see these attractions with stuff. Yes, that up. I'm with you on that one, RJ, because um, I come from that same school. Yeah, but on the same note, um, I would not be able to write if this. If Disney had not started opening these up and letting you see how everything worked, I would not have been able to write some of the stories I write and explain how things worked in these attractions and the illusions uh, because you just didn't do it. Uh, 
And of course, now it's Disney's put it all out there. So it's yeah. certainly no surprise. Well, there's our opera singer. Um, let's get her picture out of the way here. She's gorgeous. You drew her gorgeous. <laughs> She's so gorgeous. gorgeous. Uh, <laughs> Oh, and there'll be a, a candelabra instead of being on the piano. It's, going it's to be floating. Floating, yeah. So we'll just, I'll paint right over this, but just so you can see, it'll be like that. And outside these windows, there'll be the, the dead trees out here. And there'll be blue light coming in and the shadow. And Romina, you found me two great pictures of the shadow. So the yes. shadow will be cast on the floor right here um, yes. of the ghost who's playing. And yes, there is a rug which comes right under the legs of this piano. So this way and comes across. Here, another angle. So this is angle this way, this is angle right here. And it goes across that way. There we go. So that'll be our rug. And there is, of course, the piano stool here. Which is a wild piano stool. I sat on this once. Just because I just because I wanted to. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I mean, I, when we went outside, I was out here. I was same thing in the uh, uh, where the uh, guy is with the, in the coffin too. I went out so I could be looking in the window at it. <laughs> that's fun. Um, okay, yeah, that's that's good enough for that right now. And what I'm going to do now is slide this over. You're all in rapture. Nobody's asking questions or anything. No, Tony. Tony is even saying he's what, watching creative people at work is so relaxing and fascinating. Wow. So we're all getting that vibe from you drawing there. Oh, cool. I, mean, I know I'm fascinated. I'm mesmerized. See, really. far, okay. Yeah. Now let's see if I go there. Yeah, right about there will work. Okay. Hanging off the edge of the easel. You know what? I think I'll just move the easel over. Let's see if we can get this in the right spot. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Wait a minute. Make sure I'm in the picture. I'm in the picture. Ah. Oh, that's why I'm not doing it. Yeah. I'm get See, I'm so close to the screen here and everything that what's happening is I'm the legs of the easel are running into the into so my can chair. Can you move the computer then? Is it better to move the computer instead of that big easel? Just a little bit. There we go. Okay. All right, that will work. And we'll do this a little bit. Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay. Good. You're all still there. Looks good. I'm still yep. there. It's a Disney process. Mug. I haven't bought my mug of my mug yet. <laughs> Romina. Hey, I have the mug right here. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hey. Yes. Ro Can people see me? Romina has her mug. Has my mug. Hey. Has her mug of my mug. Oh, never mind. <laughs> 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 so, okay. Another pencil. Well, that's why I can't see you because you flipped the camera. Oh, yeah, I set it down just now, and it, it yeah. did a flip. Oh, no, there see, we go. now I can see. Oh, I see what's happening. You know what? Let me tip you ah, up. It was I on your end. See if I can prop you up here. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, you're, oh, yeah. It's, you know what? It's reversed on my image. Oh. Oh, I like your clock. Thank you. That's one of the clocks you got when we got married. Oh, beautiful. And there's my. <gasps> Mickey. Oh, as long as I'm showing stuff, look at this. This is actually, we got this in the Disney shop for employees. They were just going to, I keep my erasers in there. And this is actually, yeah, this is uh, uh, 
beautiful. Look at the image on there. Yeah, they don't make those moment. anymore. No, they? they don't. And cost seventeen dollars. Still got the wow. price on it. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I was trying to prop you up, but let's see. It wants to slide. Hold on a minute, folks, while I. Well, that's just not going to help you because I'd have to reverse the, the, the image. The, 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 you have a ball. Uh, uh, yeah. Is... Don't mind us. I'm, I'm not going to prop it up. That's, that's too we're, hard. We're, the, we're the, amateurs. The camera the wants camera. to slide. So <laughs> next week I'll have that figured out. Now, did you all have fun with that? There we are. Okay, I'm done for today. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. At least for that point, you can continue okay. painting, drawing. I'm going to get out my real fancy uh, triangle here. <laughs> Do you know how many paintings are on this thing? <laughs> uh, I even used this on murals. Um, anyway, okay, we're going to go across the top because I wanted to have this. Now, this part of the back wall here with the bookcase. It is straight, mm -hmm. and so when you do scale, you do you have a, like an eight by ten where you've done a big painting. So do you start like mathematically counting that yeah. and do your math mathematical accounts for the larger scale? Am I correct? Uh, yeah. In some respects, when I do like this big okay. mural, if I'm going to do it for Aurora, um, mm -hmm. is a hundred foot long wall. Um, right. And actually, I'll have to take the drawing that I did and graph it out because there's certainly no way to project it on the wall. It's so big. Right. So I'll graph it out so I can do, I can lay out sections at a time uh, to get the whole layout of the thing. But when I'm doing one like this, I actually, uh, a few hours ago, I just lightly with a blue pencil just kind of quickly did a real quick thing to see what where my interior would be on this so when i started doing this it would work but um now this is a going across there and make it light because you don't see most of that and okay put that down for a minute and get some couple of pictures here of the bookcase I think there are eight shelves. Make sure. Aha. I have one that I took when I was working there of the row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven shelves of bookshelves. So eight spaces. But there is wainscoting. Everybody know what wainscoting is? I might not tell you. Wait. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm going out of the picture. Let me come back a little bit. Wainscoting is the, uh, usually it's about three feet high. Uh, and it goes around a room, and there's a chair rail at the top edge of it. It's called a chair rail because that was put there so that chairs that got pushed against the wall didn't damage the, the wall surface itself up here. That was it. It's what they were for. And so at about three feet high, that would put it right about there. So I gotta draw a line there. Okay. So Jamie is online and what? she says hi. Hi. Also Pearl's online and she says, Wow, RJ, you have great talent. Oh, <laughs> Wow. Which you Thank do. You. Thank you. That's that's very nice. Um I I always get people ask me, you know, if I how long I've been drawing. I actually remember drawing uh Donald Duck when I was three years old. Um so <laughs> when I was very little, that was my favorite character. So this wall here has got what appears the the bookshelves are separated into two sections and let's see there's one two and then what did i do? so yeah so each section um, 
there's two sections usually there's one on the end here i'm putting and then there's a section going vertical and it has the busts in it and then there's two sections of books before you get to another section with alcoves uh for more busts so let's see there'd be one two, two there and bus and then two more at least and then it would go up at an angle maybe be a little wider okay approximately i think i'll put in two okay so I, what i'm going to do is is get the first section in here a bookcase going vertical and let's see how that would work one two three four five i think that might work i think it might have to make a little bit wider just talk amongst yourselves i'm talking to myself so um, you know, I was gonna I was gonna bring up the um, new Disney Plus uh, channel that's going to be on. It's gonna be like a Netflix thing, but it's only gonna be about Disney. And one of the things that they had mentioned is that the Disney Vault. Remember how the Disney movies used to go in a vault? Yeah. Uh, they're they're not gonna be in a vault anymore. So all the Disney movies are gonna be showing. On this new Disney Plus that is rumored to come out in November, according to the really? Wall Street Journal. Yes. Huh. So it's going to be a, like a Netflix thing. All you get all your Disney movies. Um, they're going to have, interestingly enough, they're going to have a, a show called Cinema Relics. Well, they're going to have like uh, props and costumes that were made from Disney music, I mean, Disney movies, uh, an iconic art, different movies, like from Pirates of the Caribbean and the original Mary Poppins and Who Framed Roger Rabbit. So with the, one of the shows that they're gonna show is that, the Cinema Relics. Huh, okay. Yes. So that's gonna be interesting. Um, hi, Catherine, Catherine's on. Um, also, um, the Muppet movie, they're going to have behind the scenes uh, with Jim Henson when uh, they made the Muppet movie. So oh, that's um, cool. all of that is going to be uh, showing. So that I, I'm looking forward to that because I grew up with Sesame Street and uh, uh, I really love the show. So I, I'm looking forward to that. The, all, another show is going to be called Walt Disney Imagineering Series, uh, which is going to be a 65-year history of people, craft, and the business of Walt Disney World. So that's wow. going to be interesting. Well, you're going to so. get to see a lot of people that I was able to do stuff with. That's really neat. Um, and uh, my wife, Suzanne, actually she writes about it. I think it's in the well, it's one of our first two books. I don't remember which one it specifically was in, but she was there for the opening of the uh, uh, Muppets show at the oh, studio. And actually, she was there also because uh, we saw Jim Henson, um, and he was there for the opening of it. But uh -huh. his wife, after he died, which wasn't long after that when we saw him, it was just like a month or two, she came back to see the final on the show and stuff and sat in the audience by herself and cried uh -huh. um it just yeah it was very touching um but okay um well you were talking about that <laughs> um <laughs> i'm just doing a quick layout of the dividers on this is these. for the books in the library correct yeah so i can have some uh, verticals on there um, to go by and 
I know I'm working pretty fast here, so I, I apologize. I know you are. Uh, so <laughs> you can probably do this all in one day, RJ. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's uh, it does get pretty easy, but you know I want to be as accurate as possible too. So as I do it, um, like when I when I'm doing this for you all, I'm doing it this this quickly. I'm sure there'll be some adjustments, which there usually are in something that's complicated. This is a, a very complicated uh, painting because of all the elements, and it's going to be in regular paint, uh, acrylic paint, and in blacklight paint, acrylics, if you've just joined the show. Uh, and the, so when I work on this next week, I'll be blocking in colors, but I, I don't think I'll be put, I won't be putting any black light into it. I'm just gonna blocking in colors. That'll be an undercoat. So we're, and, I'm sorry. We're going to, we're going to see you paint in the dark, uh, for the fluorescent part, correct? Yes. Yeah. You'll see, I'll, I'll one more, <laughs> yeah, you know, the week after next so next week i'll yes. be blocking in colors the following week then um, i'll i'll be putting in some start working on some detail that's where i want to be with it and when i start doing some detail i'll do the background first when you do a painting you work uh from the back forward you don't paint everything in the foreground and try to paint stuff behind. You can always see that in paintings that people do of, of landscapes and the sky. Or you look at the sky they painted, and they obviously did the sky afterwards. You can see all the brush strokes going around the trees. And, you know, it's like, uh, guys, you start at the back and work your way forward. Uh, so that's what I will be doing. Now I have um, at the top of this. Got a very wide band up at the top header. Got that. Now I've got to put in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven equal. And I will do this correctly now. <laughs> I realized when I did it over here, I was on an angle and that doesn't work. Anyway. Uh, let's see. Seven, so 14. I think you and I were talking about when you paint in the books, there have to be certain colors of books because of the black light. Yes. Yeah, we've got <laughs> um, the background books in this, uh, and the whole background will be, a it will be in black light, but it will be a little more subdued. And of course, the bookcase is in brown. Um, and it's it's how I apply the colors. So. I'm going to do that background more because what happens, especially this is, this is going to be 3D. Um, again, if you've just joined us, uh, I'm painting this for Romina, uh, who is who you're hearing here, <laughs> Romina Blake. Um, hi, hi, <laughs> hi, Romina. Um, anyway, when I'm done with this and she has the painting she'll be able to put on digital 3d glass it's digitized and they're clear but they separate the colors and it makes red come off of the painting just pure red would come off about a foot off of the painting blue sinks in about a foot all the other colors of the spectrum are in between so when i'm doing the figures i have to add little tones subtle tones of red to make them come forward more i have to subdue colors to make things go back and of course, blue, like outside here, will be perfect because it sinks way in. So it'll give a lot of depth. So there's a lot of little tricks I have to have to accomplish with this. I can't have bright red books on the bookshelf because then when you put the 3D glasses on, the, those books would come all the way out here <laughs> that are red. And the other colors, like the green books and, and brown books would be even with the canvas. And any blue books, which there are blue ones, would sink into it. So I have to equalize all that. So that's why the process is complicated. Um, so what I'm what I'm working on here is getting a, a equal number of, of bookshelves. So if I go one, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven. That'll work. So I've got this. So it's at this top point of the bookcase, the top of the wainscoting right here. And uh, actually, it's 16 inches. So every two inches, I'll put a mark two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. Those are all equal space now, all the way up, because I did it like that. So then all I have to do is <laughs> see, I need a longer piece because this is such a long canvas. <laughs> so I'll do these right here. If you're wondering what I'm doing now with this triangle, I'm actually lining up one side of it with the side of the canvas so I get a line that goes straight across. And and I will check that to make sure. In the meantime, Amanda has joined and she says, wonderful. Christina also um, is excited about the Disney Plus. And uh, she was on the Haunted Mansion the other day and thought about you the whole time, <laughs> which it that's, happens to all of us, right? That's, that's scary. <laughs> And then she said, Christine also says that you painted her painting by Blacklight here on Facebook that she has. That's the uh, inside the Haunted Mansion, is it, right? Or was, yes. Is that, I am I thinking the right one? She hasn't one? said anything yet. Oh, okay, because that, if I'm, I'm pretty sure it was the one I did, and it's the woman blowing out the candles. And oh, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and Leota is in there. She's floating up above the. The table and there's another ghost and and it was in black light and in regular light. Yes. Very cool. Um, so now I can just measure off of these, and that is one and three eighths. In the meantime, that you're um, you know. Yeah. Drawing that. Uh, also, on the Disney Plus, um, there's going to be a show called Monsters at Work, which will reprise Billy Crystal and John Goodman as the voices of Sully and Mike Wazowski. Oh, nice. Yes. So they'll be working on voicing that series that's going to come on on Disney Plus. And since also now Disney has bought Fox. They are looking into uh, expanding the Aliens franchise, Planet of the Apes, and Kingsman, the Kingsman. So if any of those are your favorites, look for those to be expanded in the future by Disney. Well, as long as they do them good, I'm all for it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I like the, planet, the new Planet of the Apes. The last two they did, I like those a lot. Yeah. Um, and well, that's great yeah yay so we're just all gonna have to wait to see what disney plus is going to i've been they've been hinting about this channel for a long long time and finally we kind of have a date of this year for its arrival so uh, we're we're really excited to see all the movies that are you know back in the vault to come out and uh, be on display for anybody to watch at any time. Well, that would be nice. I don't, yeah, I don't know how much the subscription is going to be, but uh, they say that somewhat they will be competitive with Netflix and Hulu and things like that. That are So, you know, so we'll be able to the, see movies like The Happiest Millionaire. I think so. Okay. I think so. And actually, that Happiest Millionaire, that was the last movie that was being made uh, when uh, Walt, Walt was still alive, he died. Oh wow! Before it was, it finally came out, uh, if I recall. And that was our introduction to John Davidson, who was new at the time. I mean, and, you know, not that well known. And uh, we became friends with John, and I did a portrait for him. Oh, nice! And. Uh, 
he was appearing on Miami Beach and his uh, brother was his manager at the time and contacted me and, and it was after I'd just done portraits for Liza Minnelli and Sonny and Cher. And uh, uh -huh. next thing I know, I was doing one for John Davidson and that was so much fun. And so we're like, oh my God, this is a guy who was in Happiest Millionaire and one and only genuine original family band. And of course he made many albums uh, and uh, was a star on TV shows and all kinds of stuff. He's still performing, still a great talent. He did a one man show on Broadway uh, about five years ago that was lauded and nominated. So anyway. Now it's been so, really cool to watch you do this because this is a really detailed um, so, yes. painting. A lot. I can see all the work you do, and uh, so can you see those we, lines? We have so little. Yes, I can see the lines. Oh, we're running. We're running out of time. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, we're we're like two minutes. Well, maybe we maybe. Maybe, okay, so maybe next week I'll finish laying this out. This shows yeah. you how the process. I try to estimate time. I thought, well, you know, I could probably get this whole thing laid out. But <laughs> there's so much with this bookcase. Now, this comes down, just to explain, down to here, and then the wall angles off this way at an angle. Uh, same thing up there. Chandelier is here with the ghost on it. There's a ghost, a hitchhiking ghost there, there, one here. The, um, yeah, our casket is here that the guy's trying to get out of. So what I what I've done here, these are the different bookshelves. Now that's just the middle line. I've got to thicken that up into the width of each shelf. And then all the books, I won't put I won't draw all the books in. <laughs> I'll paint those in when I get, get going with those. Uh, but then the uh, the alcoves are in between parts of this and I'll, I'll sketch one here real quick so you've got this coming up like that and it is halfway into the so these alcoves are two and a half book two and a half bookshelves high and then there'd be the, the bust in here and then Let's see, one, two, two one. Two. So Kat, Christine, Christine was saying that yes, she it, that is that painting, the one that she did in black light. That's correct. That was fun to do. Before. Yes, she says that her other painting is of the castle with RJ and Suzanne standing in front of her favorite characters. Yes. And you yes. all thought I everybody, you all thought when you see that painting, I painted it for Susie and I. Now, Christine, you wanted us to uh, wanted me to paint us into the painting, and um, that was fun to do. And I got to tell you, I use that on so many things. Uh, the image of that painting, and the uh, um, the 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 characters I put into it were related to us because Suzanne uh, Smee is in there, um, and oh, yeah. of course Sleepy the Dwarf, and those are both characters that Susie portrayed at Disney World uh, in characters. And uh, then I have uh, Mickey and Donald and Goofy, three of my favorite characters are in there with us. So, <laughs> and of course the statue of Mickey, of Mickey and Walt and the castle behind them. That was a fun one to, to lay out too. Okay, so, so Christine, yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. Christine, what? Oh, Christine says she's moving to Florida next month and her family already knows that if they have to evacuate for a hurricane to grab the clothes, the cats, and RJ's paintings. <laughs> wow, that's great. Well, you need to, Christine, you need to get a mug. Not this one. You need this to get one. the mug with my face on it. Here, I'll, I'll hold it up here. This is what Romina is showing on the phone here. Oh, I just screwed that up. Wait a minute. That's okay. <laughs> I'm holding it up. Tap to expand. There. <laughs> She's Brand holding up the mug. <laughs> so, so you'll have to take the mug with you too if there's a hurricane. For sure. <laughs> and your Bob Ross mug if you have one. 
So now you can see, because we're, we're at the end of the show, you can see two of the alcoves. There'll be two more here. We'll come around the corner. There'll be a couple more over here. And there'll be the ladder that moves. And also the book that I uh, did. There's a whole chapter on that book in our, in our first book, Together in a Dream. Um, so those will be all the background. And like I said, the, the casket uh, is here with the guy trying to get out of it. It's fun. Okay, so that's actually then next week, part three, we'll be finishing laying this out and, and getting all the detail in it. And then the next week, we'll go into the painting. You're going to have to name that painting. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we need to call it something. A, a thingy. This is the Haunted Mansion thingy. Ghostly encounters. Well, that's what you said. See, that was her idea to put that on the on the title for this uh, video. Was that was Romina? Yeah. Ghostly encounters. We should do that. We so should that's do that. that's what we'll call this: ghostly encounters. <laughs> and I had many of them in the haunted mansion in all the years that I worked there. So, because I was so over order there the book and read his stories. <laughs> yeah, buy the book. <laughs> Okay, everybody, this has been fun. Again, I'm having a ball. And, uh, and, and of course, like I say, I'm working fast. And I'm pretty quick because I've been doing this forever. But when I start doing it for the show, and, it, and I will tell you real quick, it reminds me, if I, I know I've told the story before, but uh, Bob Ross and I were good friends, Susie and Bob and I. And I would go over to his house, and he would have a scene he was prepping for the next show he was going to have videoed um, for TV. And so we would have a race. I painted acrylics. He painted oils in his studio. <laughs> and we'd see who could paint it within the half hour time frame was all you had. I was usually only half done <laughs> by the time the half an hour was over. And Bob, of course, has finished the entire painting. I sort of got close once or twice, but... No. So, <laughs> and actually, there will be a chapter about this, uh, and including that, uh, and other funny thing about me doing the videos for for uh, Bob Ross Productions, um, and they still sell the cartoon ones that I did. But uh, that will be a chapter in in our book that we're finishing right now, our third book. As well, a chapter about Mike Ruzioni, the captain of the hockey team we're friends with. And that's a whole, but that's a Disney tie-in. Both of them were Disney tie-ins, as was our tie-in with um, um, James Best, the actor, uh, and the James Best Theater and Film Acting School. We opened with him in Florida, and we ended up doing the um, uh, auditions for the new Mickey Mouse Club. So everybody that was auditioning in Orlando came to there, came there with Disney people, and they had the auditions. So I need to stop talking because we're past the hour. Yes, it's after four. <laughs> oh, thank you all so much, everybody. It's been fun as usual. And uh, uh, thank you for joining me. And remember to always have a Disney song in your heart and a friend by your side. We'll see you next week for part three of this fascinating video. Join Romina and I next week. Thank you all.